One of the things we've been doing in this channel in the recent past is we've been taking a stock and then breaking it down, simplifying the business, financials and future prospects. We did one a few weeks back on ITC and many of you enjoyed it a lot. So today we thought we could do a similar video on another company, Avenue Supermarts. And I would greatly appreciate if you left a like on this video and a comment as well. It will help with the algorithm. Okay, so let's start with the video. Now, you probably haven't heard of Avenue Supermarts and that's okay. But I can bet that most of you have probably heard of the name DMART. Avenue Supermart is the listed company that runs DMART stores. And DMART is extraordinary. It's a supermarket chain. But it's unlike any other supermarket chain you've probably encountered in the past. It's perhaps one of the most well-oiled, most efficient supermarket chains anywhere in the world. And it all began with this man, Radha Kishan Damani. He incorporated Avenue Supermarts in 2000 and then opened his first store in Mumbai in 2002. And every store began with a simple promise. Every day, low prices. So if you walked into a DMART store, you'd often find products selling at a price lower than the MRP. And you probably wouldn't find similar deals elsewhere. Now, this sounds like a simple strategy at first because, hey, all you have to do is offer people deep discounts and they will come. But to do this profitably and execute it well, you have to go through a lot of pain. You have to find every inefficiency in the system to cut a small fraction of your cost and get your customers the best deal. So how does DMART do this? Well, first let's talk about DMART stores themselves. If you've ever visited a DMART store, you will probably find yourself complaining about a lot of things. Perhaps the first thing you'll complain about is the fact that you don't see DMART stores in city centers. Instead, you will likely see them in the outskirts. So if you're planning on visiting a DMART store, you have to travel a fair bit more often than not. But in doing so, DMART gets a small edge. See, unlike most companies, DMART doesn't operate stores on rent. Instead, it owns them or gets them on a 30-year lease. And it can be very expensive to do this if you want to store right in the middle of a bustling city. And while they do in fact pick their locations based on the total family density, they only do so after considering land prices. If it's too expensive, they probably won't do the deal. But if they find a good balance between footfall and land price, then they will end up setting up and owning the store instead of renting them. Now, once they come to fully own the building, they can save on rent. And rental costs alone can add up to 5-10% to of your total revenue. And considering DMA doesn't have to spend on rent, they can funnel these savings back to customers by offering them the best discounts they've ever seen. So even though you may have to travel a little bit, you do get good prices. But unfortunately, once you reach a store, you'll have to contend with the next big challenge, parking space. Now, most DMART stores do have parking facilities, but it's nowhere near enough to accommodate the amount of people that visit these stores on a daily basis. Ideally, you'd have hoped that DMART would have solved this problem. But like I said, land is expensive. And if you want to offer the best price, you've got to make compromises someplace. Unfortunately, these compromises extend to the actual stores as well. They're mostly cramped with very little walking space. And if you have a cart, you will likely end up slamming another shopper, wondering why you even chose to visit a DMART store in the first place. But once again, the store layout is configured to find the right balance between customer satisfaction and cost savings. If they only wanted to maximize customer satisfaction, they'd have stores that are extremely roomy. Nobody would hit anybody else. But the fact is they don't have roomy stores. This obsession with saving room also extends to the racking system. DMART stores have roof-sized racks. This way, they can simply chuck inventory at the top and display packets at the bottom. And they don't need massive storerooms. Smaller storerooms meaning more space saved. And if you need some help at one of these stores just trying to find an item, you may ask one of their employees, only problem, most of these employees are contract workers. So DMART ends up saving even more money and these micro savings can add up very quickly. The good thing is that unlike other companies, DMART doesn't keep all of these savings to itself. Instead, most of the benefit, once again, is passed on to customers by offering them everyday low prices. And that's just optimization at the store level. 
Next, you have product-wise optimizations. Most people go to DMART to buy groceries, but that's not where they make most of their money. That happens with other segments. Segments like apparel, home appliances, kitchen items, and beauty products. Now, I know that this doesn't make a lot of sense at first, but think about it. Most people end up going to a DMART to buy groceries because it's cheap, but the margins on groceries are pretty bad. So they need something else something like non-FMCG items. So they attract people with the groceries, reel them in, and then make their margins by selling the non-FMCG items. Uh, that's been DMART's core philosophy right from the start. And they don't just talk every brand out there. Although it feels like you could get practically anything at DMART, they're actually selective about the kind of products they stock. One of the key criteria that these products have to satisfy is that they have to move quickly. And when they move quickly, the store gets to make more revenue per square feet of retail space. Uh, think of an example, uh, like a packet of chocos. Now, if I can sell and restock this packet five times in a given year, I can make 500 rupees in total and it sort of occupies the same space. But if I can turn over the same packet 10 times, I make 1000 rupees. And DMART does this very, very well. They have some of the best, industry best turnover ratios. Take a look at this chart. This is a comparison between DMART and Reliance Retail. Reliance Retail, by the way, is the largest grocer in India and they make six times as much revenue as DMART. But for each feet of store space, DMART makes nearly 50% more revenue each day. So even though their top line isn't as high as Reliance Retail, their profit margin is almost 2.7 times that of Reliance Retail. They're more efficient in the way they do business and they blow most of their competitors out of the water. But we're not done yet. I know I said DMART can offer best price to customers because they're saving on rental costs, space and product optimization. But I haven't yet talked about the most important thing their relationship with their suppliers. They squeeze them for discounts. They get some of the best prices from vendors and they only add a small margin on top before selling it to customers. Now, you could turn around and ask, why do vendors extend these discounts to DMART and not to anybody else? The answer is, believe it or not, very simple. DMART is extremely reliable. Once vendors sell their stock to DMART, they know that they won't have to deal with the returns if the products go unsold. So there's no risk to the vendor. And DMART also offers amazing payment terms. Most retailers pay their vendors 45 to 60 days after they buy the stock. And this makes sense because if you're a retailer and you keep delaying payment to your vendors, you get to keep more money in your kitty. It offers you more breathing room. But DMART doesn't care about breathing room. They only care about discounts. And if a vendor can offer their products at the right price, they'll pay them in just seven to eight days. And finally, vendors have an added incentive to work with DMART because DMART only stocks a few options within every product category. So if your product is in a DMART store, then you have a very good chance of becoming a go-to brand for a large section of India's population. And you can see why DMART can buy products at a discount from its vendors. By 2017, the company had perfected this model so well that they decided to go public. And when they did, it was a blockbuster IPO. D-Mart, D-Street ka dawn. Ji haan, retail chain D-Mart chalane wali company Avenue Supermarts ke IPO mein nivesh kiya hota, to aaj ab do guna munafe mein baithe hote. Everybody wanted to own the stock. And since then, the stock has just kept growing from strength to strength. In the meantime, DMART did not rest on its laurels. They started adding bigger store in the hopes of stocking more high margin products. In fact, one of their stores right now in Faridabad is a whopping 94,000 square feet, while the average size of older stores were a mere 34,000 square feet in total. They also began focusing on the private label business. Now, if you don't know what the private label business is, I don't blame you because not a lot of people focus on this, but these are products that DMART markets as its own. Brands such as DMART Premier, D Homes, Dutch Harbour, Usually they'll have a contract manufacturer make these products and they will sell them in their stores. The margins here are much better and you can see why investors were impressed with this development as well. 
also with all the chatter surrounding e-commerce, DMART also fulfills online delivery at specific locations. Now, you can either pick your order directly at these locations after ordering them online or you could have delivered them at your doorstep. For investors, DMART's prospects looked amazing. Everybody expected the stock price to keep going up. And truth be told, it has. The only problem is that there hasn't been a lot of upward movement in the last two years. So why is this happening? It's very hard to say precisely why this is happening, especially considering DMART's performance has been pretty decent overall. But DMART may have been facing some pressure from both external economic conditions and new competition. For instance, over the past year or so, inflation has remained elevated and people aren't spending money on discretionary items. So non-FMCG products like home appliances, kitchen items, apparel and beauty products aren't selling like they used to. This is evident when you look at the growth in the FMCG segments and the non-FMCG segments. Growth in the FMCG segments has continued to outpace growth in the non-FMCG segments for a while now. And as we noted earlier, the margins in non-FMCG sectors are significantly better. So maybe investors are slightly concerned about this development. Also, as we've already noted, DMART has been adding larger stores to stock more of these items, general merchandise and apparel. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to reap the full benefits of these stores considering we had COVID for a couple years and we have inflation now. So there hasn't been a massive improvement in margins as investors expected. But you could argue that these stores will mature and inflation pressures will also ease. So should we expect DMART's prospects to improve in the next year or so? Maybe. But there's one other risk, competition. There's increasing competition from organized players like Reliance and Star Bazaar, considering they're also entering into smaller towns. And these are towns where DMART currently dominates. Unfortunately, this isn't one of those transient factors that will just go away. In fact, most analysts expect competition to be fierce. So you can understand why some investors are slightly skeptical. And finally, you still have to remember that DMART is still a very expensive stock. Despite the fact that it hasn't grown significantly in the last couple of years, it's still very expensive to own considering the stock trades at a price to earnings ratio of 90. So yeah, you could argue that this is just investors tempering their expectations a bit rather than DMART doing something very wrong. Anyway, that's it from me. I think this video has gone on for long enough and like always, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a comment and maybe tell us what you would like to see next. I promise to cover them in future videos. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel because otherwise you're going to miss a lot of the stories that we are going to post in the next few weeks. Anyway, that's it from me now. I will see you next week. Until then, bye-bye.